think that that whole word streetwear is just not even a thing anymore. It should not even ever be used. It's dead. It's a new thing. To say, oh, streetwear is luxury and this and that, it just, it just is what it is now. Stussy. Next to Supreme, Stussy has one of the most recognizable logos in streetwear. Not to mention, it's widely considered as the grandfather of the streetwear genre itself. From surfboards to t-shirts and a wider range of other apparel, Stussy has experienced a number of peaks and valleys through the years. And over all these years, they've managed to remain relevant. But how did they do it? How can a streetwear brand that started way back in the 70s still remain popular today? In a genre no less where brands are here today and gone tomorrow? Well, let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the history, the rise and fall and rise again of Stussy. But before we get started, if you find yourself enjoying the videos that I do and this is not your first one that you've watched, then please consider hitting the like button for me. And even if this is your first time watching, I still hope you consider liking and sharing the video. Sharing is caring and the best way to get the YouTube algorithm to notice us. But with all that being said, let's jump right in. Born and raised in Laguna Beach, Stussy founder Sean Stussy grew up a poster boy of the California surf lifestyle. From the young age of 13, he was known for shaping surfboards. And making his official leap into business in 1979, he started his own surfboard business. He began signing off on all of his creations with the now iconic graffiti style logo, which he ripped off from his uncle's handwriting. But little did he nor his uncle know, it would eventually become one of the most famous logos in the world, acting as a spark for a larger movement in years ahead. Grinding it out, it wasn't until 1982 that he made his introduction into clothing. Sean's surfboard company was set to make an appearance at the Action Sports Retailer Trade Show. He also brought along a couple of black screen printed t-shirts with his designs on them just as promotional material, you know. But to his surprise, at the end of the show, he had only sold 24 boards and around a thousand t-shirts. So in 1984, alongside his friend Frank Sinatra Jr. And yeah, no, not the Frank Sinatra Jr. But I know, very ironic, right? They officially shifted the brand's focus from surfboards to clothing. And on that day, I'm sure they had no idea that what they were starting would shape an entire generation of youth and inspire a completely new fashion genre. Throughout the 80s, they continued to grow and in 1987, they expanded to a bigger studio in Irvine, California. There was just something about the designs that caught the attention of surfers, skaters, graffiti kids, artists, and DJs. Their link to hip hop formed pretty naturally with DJs and rappers from New York to London falling in love with the brand. And they were doing so well that by 1990, their business was generating $17 million in annual sales. Sean, now in another historic move in 1991, opened his first New York store on Prince Street with James Jeeba as manager. Yeah, that James Jeeba. The guy who would later start the other oldest and most popular streetwear brand, Supreme. They were actually among the first to set up shop in a now thriving Soho district. And by the end of the 90s, Sean's business was a success and was available throughout America. But as the 90s roared by, the brand, like many businesses, began to experience a few issues. Revenue was steady, but profits continued to dwindle. Up until 1995, Frank Sinatra Jr., Sean's partner, worried but still felt understandably safe because Sean Stussy was still the creative force behind the brand. But that confidence soon evaporated in 1996 when the brand's principal founder announced he was retiring from his involvement with Stussy, citing that he wanted to spend more time with his family. Frank spent years surfing with Sean before their business venture, so he understood his partner's decision. But Sean's departure nonetheless came just before the brand's most difficult years. The following year represented the sharpest drop in the history of Stussy. In total, 1996 was a year that saw the brand make 14 million less 
and revenue. As Stussy would eventually find its way through the years of struggle, the company took a new direction. Frank stepped down and his son, who ironically is also named Frank Sinatra, so I guess now the third, took over from his father and decided to take the brand in a new creative direction. This is where Nick Bowers comes in. Bringing his years of experience in the fashion world, most notably at that point, being with Valentino. With fresh new eyes in tow, Stussy would meander a bit through the Seanless years. Although it is important to note that they never went into the red and always remained profitable. And once Frank III took over, he took Stussy International. The legacy Stussy had set influenced a number of younger designers to follow in her footsteps. Hiroshi Fujihara of Fragment Design named Sean Stussy as a person who inspired him to create his first brand good enough. Then there was Luca Benini, founder of Slam Jam, who brought Stussy to Europe. This introduced a generation of Italian kids to the skate culture of SoCal and the accompanying anti-fashion. James LeBon, fashion photographer, video director, and graphic artist, was also inspired by the brand. And legend has it that he's buried in a coffin full of Stussy stickers. Russell Simmons also said that he was inspired by Stussy to start Fat Farm. And Stussy is credited as being the first ever streetwear brand before it was ever even called streetwear. The international Stussy tribe movement took the brand to a whole new global level. Stussy was the first brand to mix in all of the elements of what we today call streetwear, rap, punk, skateboarding and surfing. From pre-struggles to the modern Stussy, it seems that it's all about keeping the company's scale under control. Frank Jr. admits that one of the fears his team has is that the brand grows so fast it becomes difficult to control, specifically its connection within the people it sells to. That group involves those who fell in love with the brand all those years ago and now see it as happy nostalgia. But also within that faction is the newer group of highly informed young consumers. And in my opinion, the reason Stussy has been able to stick around all these years is because they never sold out. Many brands that we covered on this channel eventually sold out the larger companies that didn't have the core values in mind. Stussy has never done that. They stayed true to the crowd that brought them here all these years, and they never went corporate. But what do you think? Are you a fan of Stussy? Hit us in the comment section and let us know. And if you made it all this way and we hope you liked the video, we also hope that you consider hitting the like button for us. Liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new episode, then hit the subscribe button and then that notification bell, which will ding you whenever a new video drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, signing out. Until next time, peace.